Hey guys, welcome to another video from Historic Militaria. Today we're actually going to be looking at a pair of Mauser broom handles that have both had some pretty interesting history and some pretty long service life. Uh, and both of these started out life as Red Nines, uh, manufactured about 1916 as part of a German imperial government contract for Mausers in 9mm Luger. Um, this one does not have its red nine grips but these are actually the original grips of the gun it just uh, never got branded with the red nine and that did sometimes happen um, so the first thing you notice about both these guns is they are uh, shortened barrels and we'll get into all the whys and look at all the marks on these in just a sec but first as i was saying uh, in 1916 the imperial german government wanted some more handguns uh, to supplement the lugers that they were using so uh, mauser stepped in and offered to make up to 150,000 mauser broom handles in nine luger which was the standard german uh, pistol cartridge at the time so they started making uh, these in nine 9mm Luger, when the original broom handle caliber was, of course, uh, 30 Mauser. And to denote these, they put a large red 9 on the grips, so you could tell that you had a 9mm gun. Now, obviously, that did not always happen, but uh, the majority of the times it, it did happen. So, uh, 150,000 guns were going to be made in their own serial number range of 1 to 150,000. And uh, I don't believe the entire contract was filled. Kind of the highest that is usually seen is in the 120,000 range, and that's kind of where they petered out. Um, a lot of the first ones, of course, went to the German military, and then a lot seemed to end up in Scandinavia. Uh, Finland used a lot of them, so you'll see some of the higher numbered guns went kind of all around Europe as surplus and sold out to whoever wanted to buy them. But uh, both of these saw military service. Uh, this one is a fairly early gun. Actually, both of them are fairly early guns. As you can see, your standard serial number is right there. And that's a fairly early one. Uh, really nothing spectacular about this gun other than the fact that it's got your crown U stamp right there, which is typical of all Mausers. So what happened was in um, 1920, as part of the Versailles Agreement uh, to end World War I, uh, long-barreled pistols were cut down. And that was just sort of the reading of the treaty. I don't know that it was necessarily had to be done, but a lot of broom handles were actually cut, a lot of red nines anyway, were cut to uh, comply with the terms of the treaty. And so you'd have a fair amount of barrel chopped off here. And that was done at the arsenal level. That wasn't just a gunsmith uh, doing it individually. So your, uh, the amount of uh, work that was done is very, very precise, very good quality. Um, and these are a recognized variant of Mauser broom handle. So it's not like you're looking at something that was just sort of done on an on a ad hoc basis. Uh, so your site was just moved back um otherwise it's just a standard uh mauser you've got your short extractor and as you can see that extractor is a very black extractor that would show that this gun was reworked sometime after 1930 as well and another interesting point on this one is a mark right there which let's hope that can get into focus a little bit. That is an SU4 mark, which is actually a rework stamp from either Simpson or Spandau Arsenal. And that Eagle was only used uh, around 1937. So this gun was actually reworked in 1920 to comply with the Versailles Treaty and then reworked again uh, sometime after 1937 uh, for use in sort of uh, World War II era Nazi Germany. So it, this gun has seen a lot of use, a lot of service, and actually is in pretty exceptional shape. And the other interesting point on this guy 
is right here there is this mark right here which is actually a Norwegian rampant lion so at some point after all that this gun ended up in Norway in Norway for Norwegian service so uh, this this one has definitely been around um, you also have the stamp here when it was originally cut they put a 1920 stamp on it right there that of course this camera may or may not decide to focus on it there we go so they put a 1920 stamp right there and as you can see that one's actually stamped upside down so just a somewhat interesting gun in that it has definitely been around quite a bit so obviously your first modification would have been the 1920 where you have your 1920 stamp right here and that's when they did the cutting they removed the rear tangent sight and turned this into just a fixed sight gun just affixed a little standard notch sight right there then it actually was used as a police gun and you will see right here your police markings and that's going to stand for I uh, believe shoots Polizei I believe the MG is Mag Magberg Magberg I'm going to butcher that and I'm sure a German's going to yell at me and then your gun number and the precinct and all that good stuff now when you see these uh, numbers on a broom handle a lot of people are going to tell you those are military uh, proof marks or not proof marks but military uh, unit marks from world war one they are not they're just going to be uh, weimar era police unit marks and while they're interesting that doesn't mean that you should pay any kind of premium unless you're really into that aspect of the collecting and then after uh, that this gun was actually then um, as you can see the marks have been struck out so this gun was actually taken out of service as a police gun and then it was rebuilt I'm gonna guess for military use of some sort in 1937 and it got the SU-4 mark and then it went to Norway and got your Norwegian proof right there so a gun that's definitely been around seen a lot of service sort of an interesting story for one of these broom handles uh, if only it could talk it would be interesting to know everything it's been through uh, one thing to note this is an all factory uh, matched gun however a lot of red nines have a divot on the follower that helps to um, feed the straight case nine millimeter luger uh, this one does not and it never did even though the follower is original to the gun so the people that tell you that all nine millimeter broom handles had a divot they're not correct some do some don't most do but if you find one that does not does not mean that it was a replaced part moving on to this guy again standard red nine this was a pretty early gun as well you've got your serial number back here which is actually fairly illegible and pretty bad stamping by mauser standards even though this is a wartime gun i sometimes think their stamping was a little bit sloppy on these and the finish in general on uh, red nines is subpar of what you would expect from mauser you got your standard mauser uh, mark over the chamber you've got your black extractor which looks to be a later replacement when it was refurbished in the 1930s you've got your 1920 stamp which at least in this case is a little more neatly done and you have this fairly mysterious mark here which i'm not sure is a police mark it may be but either way it's been canceled out so it was issued for that and then if we look on the grip here we have uh more police markings 
which I believe is going to translate to Schutz Polizei. Uh, I believe that's going to be Magburg as well. I'm honestly not positive, but I believe so. And then the rest of your uh, gun number and all that good stuff. So this is one that definitely uh, was cut down in 1920, and then it was issued for Schutzpolizei Police Service in the Weimar era, and it got a sort of mysterious mark here. And if anyone had, knows about these, I would love to to hear some input on this, because this is a fairly unusual mark you do not see on most broom handles. And then it was, of course reworked uh, after 1937 when it got the SU-4 stamp right there. So again, uh, also this one, just worth noting, like the other one, has a factory follower in it that's matched to the gun, but no uh, divot for the feeding of the 9mm cartridge. So again, another example of a Red 9 that never had it. Uh, they don't always do. So don't get overly concerned about that if yours does not. If yours is a matching gun, nobody faked anything on you. Uh, you've got your standard Waffenfrabic Mauser markings on the side and a standard unmarked uh, panel on this side. Uh, but other than that, just a fairly normal gun that you would expect to have, uh, see have gone through the 1920 rework process. Um, this one somehow, even though it saw a lot of service, stayed in pretty good condition, all things considered. Um, again, you had your tangent sight removed on this one, your rear sight put on. As you can see, the lever level of work that was done on this is very good quality. And really all these kind of uh, match in terms of the quality that you're gonna see on them. They're all nice, they all look good, they're all done very professionally. If ever you see one that isn't very professional, it probably was not done uh, in Germany since the rework process seems to have been very, very standardized as is typical of what you expect from German quality. Um, anyway, just wanted to uh, share a couple of interesting guns that saw a lot of years of service and one in particular that really went through a, a couple of units and ended up in Norway and went through two rebuilds like both of these guys did and yet uh, is still here still functioning and and very interesting parts of history hope you've enjoyed taking a look at these and if there's something you would like to see let me know and we'll see if we can do a video on it look for more broom handle content from us as well as other firearms or helmets ordnance all kinds of good stuff if you enjoy what you're seeing like and subscribe and we'll be doing more for you thank you for watching